time in 2016 promises to be one of the most revealing years in history. One of the most revealing years in history. Revealing. So, without further ado, let's get started in this, and I pray that the Lord, our God, work through me spiritually to help prepare you in a proper way. I could do it, but that would be in a uh, military-type fashion, which is useless in your life. But if the Lord certainly does work through me, you can be prepared in truth. You can be prepared in truth. And that is the goal here, so that you're not taken by surprise. One thing uh, that not only myself, but others with whom we have this project going, we often mourn for society because they are truly oblivious. You see, they think it's fanciful to speak about things that will absolutely impact their lives because it has not taken place yet. And that is just not a very good attitude. If a person is a student of the Bible and they begin to not debate but accept the things biblically, having them conferred to them spiritually, they will then have the truth enough of what they need not to have a heart attack when these things begin to happen. And I do notice things from time to time. <clears throat> there are people who panic over tornadoes, over floods, over earthquakes, they begin to panic. Well, if they're panic, if they're going to panic over that, there's, they, they can't in their present mindset survive what's on the way. And so to, if, in order for a person to say, hey, I'm going to stand strong in that day, you have to stand strong today, always. You have to, you can't waver. The time of wavering, <clears throat> it's over, it's unsafe. Even right now, do you not know that the U.S. is at a very high state of alert? Do you know? Now, publicly, they mentioned three cities to you, didn't they? Three cities. Only three cities. But you know and I know, and some other people know, it could go much further than that. You also know that the terrorists have this, they have a way about them. And here's how they work. If, they just, if a terrorist threat is disclosed to be in a certain city, they're going to hit a city that is not affiliated with the cities of which people have dispatched manpower to. Please understand that. So while everybody's rushing to New York and Washington and, and various other cities, those are not going to be the cities that fall prey to any terrorist activity. So it's going to be everybody to be vigilant, not just for New Year's Eve, not just for New Year's. But always, you see, I really don't think everybody's adapted just yet to living in a world where you have to remain vigilant always, right? Not paranoid, vigilant. So how do you do that? You still have your joy? Well, hopefully we can put some things into perspective over the course of days that everybody can walk in a type of spiritual security and stand ready to assist anybody else who needs their assistance. But it's going to take a change in a mindset. Speaking about a mindset change, I have to talk to you about the second wave and disclose some things very carefully. Now, I'm going to do this very carefully. And one of the colleagues is, uh, I have a window open just in case I get foot and mouth disease. All right, That means I, ca I cannot say too much. All right, I can't say too much. But I need to get you in a frame of mind of truth and break the paradigm of the lie that you've been living under. So we need, guess what we need to talk about? We need to talk about photons. How many people know what a photon is? Anybody? I'm going to give you a simple uh, explanation of this. A photon. Photon, a photon, also called a light quantum, is a tiny little energy packet of radiation. That's what it is. Electromagnetic radiation in a small, tiny package. Everything you see around you is loaded with photons. But they perform an extraordinary task. They hold atoms. They, they actually hold atoms together, so to speak. They also hold larger uh, matter together. Okay, they're electromagnetic forces. And if you take two magnets big enough and put them together, you can't pull them apart because you don't have enough force to do that. Right? However, if you create an opposition or generate an opposition to that magnetic attraction, 
you can break the connection effortlessly. I'm about to introduce you to something. So, everything that we see is held together by electromagnetic forces. I need you to think of them as both attraction and repulsion. Okay, they both attract and repel. They do. Attract and repel. Everybody say that? Attract and repel. That's good. That's called refraction, diffusion, attract, repel. Same thing. Okay. They found out a long time ago, some years ago, that some of the stars, they observe forming gravity does not account for the forces in them. So it is only electromagnetism that is responsible for the formation of things. Somebody asked me too, well, if electromagnetism has these predetermined properties, how do we stay on the ground? Right? Now, it would be easy to say, well, gravity holds you to the ground. That's not the truth. It's not the truth. Electromagnetism is holding you to the ground. It's also pushing you up from the ground so you don't fall through it. So it is a perfect dance of photons between two two particles of matter. And they've been trying to break it apart. And it takes an enormous amount of energy to do this. Okay? And this is why they have 392 elements that they never told the public about. How about that one? Hmm. How about that one? How about in 2015? Well, they introduced super, uh, 2005, I'm sorry, they introduced what's called super solids. Has anybody ever heard about this? A super solid? Think of two pieces of matter that can pass through each other and still keep their formation in shape. That's a super solid. They don't obstruct one another. Super solid. So they can pass through each other. Super solids. Now, this was a theory put forth in 2005. But then it fell off the radar, and it's actually being used today. All right. How about uh, strange things like teleportation? That was actually accomplished in 2014, just so you know. They did, in fact, successfully teleport one part, one piece of tiny matter from one place to the other without going through the air. How did they do this? Controlling electromagnetism. But at a very tiny scale. In other words, very precisely. Very precisely. Okay? And these are things... Listen, this, that is in the public domain, but they never tell you where to look. In fact, all the puzzle pieces are in the world. Don't go out and search for it. But you don't know how to put it together. Because you're thinking in a mindset... Like most people say, well, the greatest thing man can ever achieve is anti-gravity. Well, that would be the dumbest thing man could ever achieve, since electromagnetism is responsible for holding things in certain positions. So you don't need anti-gravity. You can easily defeat gravity, but you cannot easily defeat the electromagnetic pull or repellent. Right? You can't easily break that. And so the actual mindset is this. How do I control the electromagnetic field? Or how do I control photons? So I suggest to you this for all of you who have the out there mindsets, listen to me closely. There's a reason, and yes, I have to talk about a subject that uh, you shouldn't be curious about, but we have our own set of, let's just say humanity, we have a set of, of, uh, let's just say technology, that because Because nobody nobody can ever prove they're not not classified, classified, so to speak. But they are beyond the realm of your comprehension. comprehension. And they they operate by controlling photons. 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 Have you ever noticed that that everything that you see, everything that you see, you see see light all around you, right? right? Everything Everything has has light to it, everything, your body and everything everything else. else. Okay, Okay, that's that's called called our dimension. dimension. Our dimension is a dimension of light. In a certain spectrum of photons, right? Another dimension would be a dimension still having photons, but in a different wavelength of light, right? Now, remember, photons are behind everything. Damn. If you could control photons themselves, if you had the right materials to control photons, you could, in fact, do miraculous things. Number one, you could bend light. You could bend it, and anything that can bend light can overcome the electromagnetic field which they're part of. 
If a person can control an electromagnetic field, you have dimensional shifts. Now, to be honest with you, this is what they've really been working on with CERN. And they made it public, but they just did so mathematically, so the average person cannot extract what they've been doing. They've been playing with protons. See, when you break any particle down and explode it, what you're seeing is the formation of the radiation that is responsible for photons. It's what you see. Even when you mess with lead, it's the same thing. Lead ions. You're dealing with photons at the root of it. The sun's light and heat is a photon. Any light that's observable affects you, just so you know. If you did not see the sun's light, it wouldn't affect the earth like you think it wouldn't. Because the photons that affect the earth, which by the way is electromagnetic radiation, they affect the earth in a certain spectrum of things in the spectrum. That's why certain things seem through SOHO to pass right through the sun having no effect. It's because SOHO can detect a very broad spectrum of light, right? That's not visible to the human eye. Kind of like UV, UV light, it's not visible to the human eye. But it can be detected by optics which can see in that spectrum, all right? So they can detect the radiation being emitted from certain sources. They can see in different, different uh, spectrums. But what it does not mean is often something that you can pick up with optics does not affect this realm of photons. I'm going to call them photons, which is light. So then you're actually peering into a different dimension, so to speak. That's what you call it. That's not what... Dimension is not a word used in the science of photons, believe it or not. Because it, 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 in fact, it's quite foolish to even state that. Since all things exist all together. Right? But light is what separates you from the other things. They can pass through you, you can pass through them. But you can coexist in one spot, but they cannot interfere with you. Because of photons. Right? They're all around you all the time. They're everywhere all the time. Listen to me. When in the Bible... Didn't Elijah say, God, open up his eyes so he can see, and he saw angels and horses all over the place. He saw an angelic host all over the place, didn't he? They were everywhere. Why couldn't he see him at first? They were always there, but he couldn't see him. Why? Why couldn't he see him? Why couldn't he see him? God had to open his eyes, right? And then he saw him. What did he see into? He didn't see into this realm of reality. He saw past this realm of light. That's what he saw. He saw past this realm of light. So what I'm telling you is that something is all around you all the time. They're here. They're everywhere. Okay? You just can't see them. You can't see them. In fact, they work in your life all the time. Now, I can suggest to you the government knows exactly what they are. They know what they are. They don't like them because they can't do anything about them. And what they're in a rush to do, believe it or not, I'm telling you now, they're trying to control photons. And if they can do this, they can wage war against the unseen. They can wage war. Now, they have done so to a degree. They have done so more than you know. You know how most people say, well, technology, technology that's really being used is 30, 40, 50 years beyond what we see today. Okay, can I get, since this is Wacky Wednesday, I'm going to submit to you, it's about four to five hundred years. It's well beyond 30 or 40 years. It's about four to five hundred years beyond. Most people look at the stealth technology today, the computer systems. Did you not know in the 60s they had computer voice recognition systems, just so you know. In the 60s they had this. You see, public science catches up with other sciences of which most of your tax dollars go to. But that's your own discussion right there. I can't get into that. But what I'm telling you is this. That's just like the space program. It never stopped. It never stopped. Do you really think that the shuttle and everything... Why, why are they up the space station continuously? Why did they have to go up there and conduct scientific experiments? Let me tell you why. It's because the physics on Earth do not work like the physics in space. That's why. 
And when you find out the differences between the two physics, you truly understand more the properties of what you're trying to master. Because they're trying to master the photon. Right? And photons do what? Don't they cover this domain that we live in? Another name for domain is your reality. Huh. That makes sense. Master the human reality. Oh, excuse me. Master the human domain. How about that? That's better. If they can do this, if they can, they can wage war against those who control everything. And that's what they're trying to do. Biblically speaking, nothing happens on earth unless it's ordained by the control, which is our Father in Heaven. All right, everybody with me so far. So, light itself is what they need to control. To control light, you must control the photon. You must. Once you control the photon, you can turn it in light. By the way, most of the, most of the objects people see all the time, they, they don't know what they are, but they have one thing in common. You know what that is? Everybody says, ooh, it's all bright light. Some of our craft have a bright light on them. They have a bright light. Why the bright light? Why can't they see anything else but a bright light? They see a bright light. And then people see triangles. Why is the triangle portion invisible? They didn't try to make it invisible. But what they're doing is they're directing photons. That's what they're doing. There are a lot of reports, people who have been around military bases, like NTC and other places, where they saw a beam of light slowly come out. Slowly. A beam of light cannot slowly come out. Unless you're controlling the electromagnetic forces, and this is what they're doing. They're attempting to control the electromagnetic forces. And something so small like an atom has an immense amount of electromagnetic pull and repellent to its electrons. And to break that, right, they found out it's not a matter of energy, but a matter of frequency. You have to attract and redirect the photons. And come to find out, there are different types of photons. They're not all the same. They have different properties. And then come to find out, they're all over the place. All over the place. So, if an individual could control the photons, right? Well, then they would have a, a type of mastery over certain elements. That's what the real story is. Now, if you can redirect your thinking and understand this thing about protons, and, 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 or photons, I'm sorry, photons, which are in fact light, okay, then you'll begin to understand some of the mysteries you've been boggled about over the course of years. You'll also understand, ah, that's what everybody's trying to get to. Things will begin to make sense. And it pulls limitations away. And then you'll find out, well, we must have done more than what they're telling us. Because your computer system, all it's doing is messing with electrons and protons. That's it. Based on which one you believe, proton theory or electron theory. But photons, the control of light, is what they're after. That's what they're after. Now, I, they, some of the... There's a, if, if you can comprehend this, then you'll understand what I'm about to say about 2016. It will be a year of revealing. Many things will be revealed. Many things are going to be turned on their head. And the elitists are on a type of timetable. And they know it. Not that they're being forced, but they won't be able to hide some things in 2016. Many people are going to become very wise. Right? Because a lot of people are going to begin to notice things that don't follow the natural course of physics. They'll begin to notice these things. And the entire thing will be, uh, in, in fact, this conversation about electromagnetism will likely spread. Because people right now are beginning to work. And they, it, it accounts for what gravity cannot account for. Right? It's force is 1,040 times stronger than gravity. Gravity is an instigator only. It is not the force you contend with. It's not. And it will allow you to understand 
even to the point of why CMEs are so, some of a, a direct CME directly aimed to the earth can do something or nothing. How many of you know this? If a CME hits the earth, do you not know it can do absolutely nothing? And it's based on polarity. It's based on magnetism in the end. It's based on electromagnetic forces. It's based on light. It's based on photons. It's what it's based on. Because the Earth can either absorb it or repel it. If it absorbs it, we're in trouble. Right? To a big degree, if it repels it, no big deal. You have the auroras at the North and South Poles because the Earth is taking in that solar radiation into its magnetic field, feeding it back into the core of the Earth. It's like a, a never-ending cycle. So in effect, the sun's energy is keeping the Earth the Earth. And it also calls the bubble around our solar system. <clears throat> that same solar wind has caused the bubble around our solar system, which is beginning to collapse. The bubble is collapsing. Now, here's what happens. If you... If you blow up a balloon, right? But you don't take it out of your mouth and you squeeze the balloon, what happens to the air? It begins to go back into your mouth, doesn't it? So you have to exert pressure to keep the balloon up. Solar radiation is the same thing. So guess what happens? If the force externally outside the bubble of our solar system increases too much, what happens to all of that radiation? It's forced back near its origin or to the closest thing that can absorb it. So the sun will do a wicked chimney. Okay? The sun will, will do a wicked chimney. And, and where the external particles that come into our solar system, where they hit the bubble, it's called a bow shot. That's what it's called. But it's a bubble around the entire solar system. All the way out to Pluto, right? In a little past there, you have a bubble because the sun is constantly emitting energy. And then you have galactic particles coming in and they meet around that they're coming in from everywhere. And the sun is in fact a shield for the solar system. It is. Just like the core of the earth provides the shield for the earth, right? And the core of the earth gets a lot of its energy and it's instigated by the core of the sun. All things are intimately tied together like a perfect machine. All the planets serve a specific role in life on Earth. They really do. And it's like a perfect machine, a perfect mechanism. It really is. It sustains life. And if Earth is a, is a, is a, is a perfect sphere for life, or if you believe it's flat, let's just say it's a perfect place for life. I don't get into the flat and round arguments. I'll tell you guys about that. So, as this, as the external, this galactic radiation continues to come in, we already talked about magnetars, how they did affect the Earth, right? How they did. How that one... It was calculated back to its origins, and it was 50, 50 light years away, so it happened 50,000 years ago. Or it was 50,000 light years away. 50,000 years ago, this thing popped. Right? Even in the course of our lifetimes, they have observed some more popping. So, we're on a countdown. We're on a countdown, because some of these are incredibly close. We're on a countdown. This other wave, nobody knows yet what was absolutely responsible for it, but the radiation is certainly immense. And it's improbable right now that the sun can push against the forces of it. It is a probability that the bubble around the solar system will eventually collapse under the pressure this way. It will come in like a, knife, a hot knife going through butter. At that, At that point, point, it will affect our atmosphere and the core of the Earth and all the other planets, too. But specifically Earth, because we are here, that's where we are. 
It will eventually affect many things, but there are going to be some signs, some signs before it ever gets here. There are going to be some things. Because with every wave that comes in, there's always other particles that are changed through plasma and other means that will reach us first, which always give a telltale sign. Right? It's, it's not like, like a tsunami. tsunami. Before, Before a tsunami, tsunami hits, what, what happens, happens to the water on the beach? It disappears, right? right? It starts, it starts going, going backwards. backwards. And so, so you're going to see a change and photons on the Earth, period. period. You're, you're going to see, see a change in electromagnetic forces, forces likely, likely that no one can explain. explain. Because, because the, the sun, sun won't do it, but it will draw some of the energy from the sun, which means you're going to have an increased solar wind from, from the, the sun, sun but, but in one direction probably, probably covering about 30 degrees, degrees so, so the sun, sun will span out its solar winds, winds and they'll all be attracted to one specific section which is going to be very weird i just hope that's not in our neck of the woods because that wouldn't be good we don't need that type of heat but that is yet to be determined one, One thing, thing is for sure, 2016, 2016 late December, is when the magnitude of this thing comes into our solar system. system. It only, only takes a, 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 a minutes. It only, only takes minutes before it hits the Earth when it's outside of Pluto and so forth. Okay? Because this thing is in. And they put barriers in your mind. They got everybody messed up. You're thinking that gravity is responsible for all things, and it's not. Einstein's equations, yes, they do work based upon mass and mass only. They really do. Based on mass and potential energy. They do. Einstein's theories work that way. But we're going to see a change in electromagnetic forces in the Earth. Now, without the pressure on the Earth, guess what happens? The first one, the tiny wave, August 17th, they came through, actually caused a chemical change in the Earth. It caused a chemical change in the Earth. August 17, 2015. You ought to do some searches on what, what went haywire that day. And you tell me it was a coincidence. That's all you have to do. You tell me it was a coincidence. Because there were physical changes that took effect with matter. Physical changes with other things. Behaviors of creatures and animals. Strange burns began to appear, and it affected those the life forms deep in the ocean. But that was just the first one, which was only, that was like a tiny little, um, maybe the force of a human hair. That's it. But the second wave is very different. It's very different. I say extremely different. Extremely different. And, and so, so before it comes, you're going to see a change in electromagnetic forces. Now, I have to tell you this because when electromagnetic forces change, I told you about photons. We talked about photons in what you call dimensions. Didn't we? So, that means when electromagnetic energy changes, your computer is still going to run because it's based upon electrons. Your phone will still work. It's based on electrons to the electron theory. It's based on silicon and things like that. Right? What will change? What's going to change is the core of the Earth will begin to change. How it's going to change can only be theorized at this point. There is no solid answer for how the core of the Earth is going to change. The dynamics inside the core, inside the Earth, are our strangest best. So scientists have given it their best guess to see what's in there. But I can tell you this, it's going to begin to change. What changes when the core of the Earth changes? Because it, in fact, produces a lot of magnetism. So if electromagnetism begins to change, we're going to have a solar change and an Earth change. We're also going to have crustal issues in the Earth. If you thought you saw, ever saw a sinkhole, you were wrong. You will see a sinkhole. You're going to hear about very strange discharges from the ground and not the air. That won't make sense. A new phenomenon. Discharges from the ground. In an attempt 
for the forces in the Earth to try and compensate for a loss of electromagnetic energy. It will then free. See, without electronic, without the forces of pressure, right, to contain the energy in the Earth, well, what, what naturally happens? It begins to escape. If it begins to escape, then the lightning phenomena may begin in the wrong direction. A visible lightning phenomenon. Right? And you're not supposed to have lightning in the ocean, right? Now, this is going to sound weird. But I wouldn't recommend people go on cruises in 2016. Because if energy discharge... And you know that uh, lava carries... It, it creates its own electromagnetic forces, right? So listen, when magma flows... And, and you got lava flowing and everything else is creating electromagnetic forces... If they're being taken away from the Earth, then all that electromagnetic energy is going to be drawn out into the atmosphere. If it's drawn out into the atmosphere, you're going to see some very strange things in the atmosphere. That makes any type of volcanic eruption unsafe to be around. That means the electrical discharges can be immense. That means people are going to have static electricity problems. I mean, to the point where they go to flick a light off, and maybe they, this time, they get a burn mark on the fingertips. And I know that's happened in the past where you're walking around your house and you're building up static electricity because your body's not in contact with a, a grounding source of the floor where the energy can turn back into the earth. But you're talking about twice the buildup in your system because it's being discharged from the ground back into you. And then poof! And those of you who don't have good grounds in your homes, as this phenomenon builds... Circuit breakers are going to start blowing for no reason, not because of the CME or anything else. Your computer equipment may begin to, uh, you know, go on and off based on some weird stuff. Lithium batteries will certainly be affected. Lithium ion, lithium polymer, and all those lithium type batteries are going to be affected. They will. And then the phenomena of what we call the blue light will begin. A phenomenon of blue light. Many reports will come through. Hey, I saw a blue light. I saw a blue this, blue that. And it will not be a UFO or anything else. It's simply going to be a discharge in a certain spectrum based upon the electromagnetic energy that's changing in the Earth, which will emit, will emit different types of different colors, in this case, blue. It will emit blue, strange, strange blue phenomena. Volcanism. Now, now, this, this is, is what I hope does not, not happen. happen. We're, We're having, having eruptions, eruptions now, which is in fact alleviating pressure of the magma. magma. But, but it's, it's also a telltale, telltale sign that something is forcing the magma upward. upward. Okay? okay? It, it is. is. It's, it's a telltale, telltale sign something, something is, is, is heating up inside the earth. The earth is heating up inside due to an excess in these particles coming in. Now, what I don't, you know, it doesn't matter what I hope, wish, or anything else. What will be, will be. But what not only myself, but a few of us are thinking, is that the magma is going to have to find either new channels to discharge itself, or we're going to have extreme breakage in the crust where we've never had before. If you think earthquake falls... Right? How do, How do you, you think, think they, they got, got there? there? Number, Number one. one. If they're if overwhelmed with pressure, because volcanoes, volcanoes are like a, it's like, like a welding torch, torch right? right? You've got yeah, hot rock flowing everywhere, and if they get underneath the fault, they can actually begin to seal it. So that means it has to come out in another place. And while everybody's looking at a fault line and crack, something else cracks that they weren't aware of. This is what we're going to run into. Because that hot rock can effectively seal. Separations in land masses, tectonic plates. So we'll likely see a strange increase in magma flow underneath the crust of the earth. Now what happens to the water in this scenario? You don't have any water in this scenario. You don't. But you will have liquefaction. You know what that is? That's when the ground shakes so much and it begins to hit a certain vibration that the ground essentially turns into a, almost like a liquid and things begin to sink in it. That's what that means. It's exactly what it means. Now, somebody asked me, they said, well, is seven, a planet seven X doesn't have anything to do with the waves. And as I told you before, 
I, I have not looked into Planet 7S. We, we have in the body of Christ people who do look into that. But I'm tracking this radioactive stuff that's coming into our solar system. Because we're going to have to deal with that. Who? Nobody knows. It could be from that object. I call it the destroyer. 